Hey everybody, this is GGB, getting into the fourth quarter of action for this game. I doubt many people are going to watch this if they watch any of quarter three, quarter two, or uh, maybe quarter... No, if you watched any quarter three, you would be like, yeah, I'm not watching the quarter, fourth quarter. I think I know how this turned out. Um, but if you're a Big 12 fan, you're going to want to watch your team dominate some more. I mean, there is a chance, a good chance to lose to the ACC and I'm going to be honest, um, the ACC is a really good team. And they have a, this is the last year they're going to have Bruce Arians as their head coach. Last time they're going to be the Bucks, Because Todd Bowles is going to be taking over for Conference USA next year. So you're going to get this great team. But uh, they're going to hand off um, to, I believe, Chris Carson that time. Yeah. And they just don't want, they don't want Joe Mixon to get hurt. And honestly, that is fair. And at this point, I'd be taking out Patrick Mahomes. I'd be taking out Tyler Lockett. I'd be taking out Mark Andrews. All my offensive linemen. You have the depth. Right? You don't have to play a single starter for the rest of the game. You have 10 offensive linemen. Under center here is Patrick Mahomes. And to go handoff again to Chris Carson. And he's actually going to get tackled for either no gain or a loss. And he's up a third and eight. Andrews and Dejo with the tackle. Uh, third and eight. I don't understand why Patrick Mahomes is still in this game, if I'm going to be honest. Um, there is no reason for him to be up by 31 points. Under center is Patrick Mahomes once again. He's going to go pass. He fires it underneath to um, that CD Lamb. Yeah, CD Lamb. It's going to be a fourth and one. I feel like I'd punt this simply because I don't need to go for it. Um, why give them any chance at all? I understand it's not really a chance just to score 31 points uh, in 12 minutes without any response whatsoever. Actually, 13 and a half minutes. I'd be insane, but it's yeah, pumped the ball away. Yeah, Richie James Jr. is going to have to... Man, he got absolutely destroyed. You should have just taken the fair catch, man. There's no reason to take a hit like that for this team. Um, bring up first and ten for Taylor Heineke and his team to come out here. And, oh, yeah, good job. Yeah, thumbs up. You guys have done so well that you've scored one touchdown. You've scored seven points the entire game. And you have about 150 yards of total offense. Really great. Yeah, you guys have been killing it. Don't know what alternate reality world they're living in. Um, but if you're a big golf fan, you got to be excited to see how well your team was played. I understand this is just Conference USA. But normally they have struggle go, struggle against the number 11 seed. It's pretty impressive they didn't this year. Empty set for Taylor Heineke. Takes a snap. He has plenty of time. He's going to scramble. He's going to throw across his body and actually find an open man. He's going to make a move. Give out the 45-yard line, 43-yard line. And to think, what if they had done that when they were actually still in the game? That would have actually made it an interesting football game. Um, if they had made plays like that, that was actually a really great play. And you know who made it? It was Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones being just the best player on this football team, and it's not all that close. He's the only player who has been playing well this football game. Uh, shotgun here for Taylor Heineke. Takes the snap. Fires it, and that's going to be intercepted. First interception of the ball game, first turnover, and that is a fitting way to get our first turnover of the ball game. Jason Barrett. Picking him off. Jason Brett was a huge, and I mean huge, piece of that championship run a little while ago for this football team. And I expect him, if they have a chance to win a championship this year, that's secondary, including him and Xavier Howard um, and Chris Harris Jr., are going to be a huge reason why this is a championship caliber team. And I ever, I don't question that this is a championship caliber team. I 100% believe it. Under center, here's Patrick Mahomes. We easy handoff of the middle for Chris Carson, although he doesn't go very far, only five yards. But yeah, this is a championship caliber team right here. I think most people know it. I mean, most they're overlooked a lot. And it's simply because they don't have the star power of the SEC, the ACC, the Big Ten, Big 12, I mean, the ACC, Pac-12, FCS Division Two, Division Three, 
I mean, everyone knows Patrick Mahomes, and everyone knows Joe Mixon's really good. But the fact is, the receiving core is it's subpar. Um, the offensive line's really good. Defense is often viewed as lackluster and not the best. This is why, of this, of the six, they're the six. They're the number six team for a reason. Um, great, great win by Chris Carson. Um, the goal is get Chris Carson also over 100 yards before the game ends. It's the goal stream. Got to have two players that had a great running game. But, yeah, I think anyone who watched this game should know that the, the Big 12 is a serious competitor this year. I mean, all you got to do is go back to last year's. They almost lost to the 11th seed in Mac. They did. They almost lost that game. The Mac was <laughs> – they were very much in that football game for a long time. Until the fourth quarter, where the the chief the Big Twelve kind of ran away with it, before making they made it really close and then they ran away with it. Shotgun, it's Patrick Mahomes. Don't know why Patrick Mahomes is still in the game. You know, handoff to Chris Carson. Maybe it's because all that's all he's doing. It's about six yards on the play. But yeah, I mean, I don't know who can watch this game and not think this team is a legitimate contender to win it all this year. Uh, I think they they're coming off the championship last year. Um, they were the sixth seed last year and they won the championship, so they were the lowest seed ever won a championship. Under center is uh Patrick Mahomes, you know handoff. Um, he's gonna get tackled behind the line of scrimmage, or at least way behind the line to gain. It's gonna bring up fourth and ten. I mean fourth and two. Ten minutes left to go in the game. But yeah, just watching this, I think the ACC game is going to be so much fun. Um, it is going to legitimately be an extremely interesting ballot between two great quarterbacks and Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. Um, you're going to get to see some great running games between Dalvin Cook and Joe Mixon. And obviously, the Joe Mixon... The Buccaneers run game is going to be good with Lamar Jackson involved. Kick is up and good. For, uh, Justin Tucker, just so that they can uh, win by 34 instead of 31, just so they can put the extra little cherry on top of this whole ordeal, but yeah, I mean, could you best uh, for a more draft? After we had that absolutely exciting, phenomenal ending to Mountain West AAC, where the AAC gets to move on for the first time in their conference history, it looked like they were going to blow it against the Mountain West, and the AAC somehow comes out on top in a miracle, miracle fashion, and Case Keenum and Cole Beasley and Cortland Sutton and... The the unlikely hero of Jordan Aikens, the player that started out the game with a fumble that led to them going down by 14 points immediately, would be the hero in the game in the final minutes, is insanity. And it could it was literally drawn up perfectly. It could not have been a more perfect story if you tried. Um, and the, I mean, if you could try, you could try to make the AAC win it all. And that would be honestly really interesting, but... Just this alone was a huge step for them this year, making it to the divisional round for the first time in conference history. Taylor Heineke is going to get sacked once again. Emmanuel Aguilar is going to get his second sack of the ball game, and honestly, you got to be taking this confidence heading into the next round of the Big Twelve. The defensive line has been absolutely killing it. Jerry Hughes and Emmanuel Aguilar together have been absolutely just in Taylor Heineke's nightmares is these two just absolutely wreaking havoc on his day. Second and 17. But, I mean, you just look at this, and you got to think, do the Big 12 have a legitimate chance to repeat? Um, there's never been a repeat champion before. Um, not even the same team has won two conference of champions. The first year, the Big 10 won it. Second year, the ACC won it. And last year, the Big 12 won the Conference of Champions. The SEC has never won it. I'm sure the Pac-12 SEC in Division Three would love to win it, but that might not ever happen. And obviously, a group of five team has never won a Conference of Champions. 
Um, the farthest they've gotten was wild. Uh, the, was divisional, and it was it's the Mountain West every year. Or yeah, that's it. That's the only group of five teams that's ever made it to the divisional. But AAC has become the second, um, and possibly the MAC could become the third if they beat the Independence this year. Um, and we get another sack for Emmanuel Agua. <laughs> third sack of the ball game. Let's call Emmanuel Agua. Wait, I mean, you have to just look. This defense was so good. And how much of it is Conference USA's ineptitude? I mean, there's some portion of it that's that. But at the same time, this isn't the Sun Belt, guys. There are good players on this football team, and none of them have made a significant impact on offense. And the fact is, I think a lot of that portion could be uh, pointed to the secondary doing an elite job. I think a lot of it could be the front four doing a phenomenal job, and they're going to pump the ball away again. The ball's gone. That's going to be returnable. Or Tyler Lockett, but he's going to go down at the 38. But, I mean, you just, like, looking at this team, you got to think, especially last year, they arguably got better. Um, I understand that they're around the same as they were last year. But Joe Mixon getting so much better is going to be such a huge impact for them. Like, Joe Mixon has taken a drastic jump upwards in overall-wise and as a player overall. And I think Joe Mixon could be that X-factor for the team this year that they had last year. But also Joe Mixon this year has just added an extra oomph to this team. And it's going to be interesting. Their path to the championship last year... They took down ACC, Big Ten, and then the SEC in the championship. And it could be possible that we, that we see that... Uh, actually, I'm sorry. They took down the Big Ten and then the SEC and then the big uh, the ACC in the championship. But what I'm saying is... We, maybe the other, I think we took down the SEC, then the Big Ten, and then the ACC in the championship. But we could see a very similar four teams... David Montgomery also got to be like, oh, yeah, I'm also here. Three rushes, 21 yards. I mean, you can't just have two running backs dominate a team. We got to add that third one in at the end so that we can just prove that all our running backs are really good. But, yeah, I mean, I would be taking two Mixon out, too, because he's been such an important part of this offense. And I understand not taking Patrick Mahomes out simply because I would take him out. But, um... I don't think you need to simply because he's not passing the ball. He's just handing the ball off. But, um, I mean, you got to think this team has what it takes to win it all. And I think it's going to be interesting. I think every team that makes the division round definitely has a chance to win it all. Um, some teams definitely have a better chance than others. Oh, you've yet to see the any team that's not one of the six the top six make it to the to the conference uh, to the championship round um but man would it be interesting if we could see the I mean, imagine the AAC that would be such a great story if the AAC Jags in the one year that they're the Jaguars if Case Ke- the one year Case Keenum's their quarterback they can somehow make it all the way to a conference championship it would be insane under center is Patrick Mahomes. They're gonna go hand off. Oh, they're actually gonna pitch, which makes no sense there. It would that was a bad decision. Um, but it, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. It could not matter less right now. Everyone's just chewing clock, so this game can be over. And the Big Twelve will officially move on to the second round of the conference of champions. So they can I don't know how to describe it. The Big 12, um, the Big 12 is just dominant. I mean, there is no other way to describe it. They are just, they look that good. They're here, they're playing Conference USA. I don't know how good they're going to look against a team like the ACC's caliber. Simply because how good the ACC really is. I mean, like, the ACC has a legitimate chance of winning it again this year. And the SEC always has a chance to win it, but they always somehow blow it at one point or another. And it's going to be interesting to see how they do it this year. 
the SEC has never won a conference of champions, and it's, there's reasons why. Um, I'm interested to see the Pac-12, because honestly, the Pac-12 has never had a full chance to win it all. Um, last year, they had a good chance. They really did. Um, and their star quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, got hurt, and they had to play with Justin Herbert. And the fact is, as good as Justin Herbert was last year, he was not Aaron Rodgers' level, and it's the reason why they lost. They could not get any offense going, and they ended up losing, and Aaron Rodgers ended up not playing that game. So if they could have Aaron Rodgers, they have a chance to win it all. They do. Uh, the Pac-12 is an often overlooked team that can win it all. They can. They've never made it to a Super Bowl, though. Um, the FCS Division II, Division III is overlooked. Um, and it's because I think they kind of deserve to be. They have never shown any ability that they can win at all. And the fact is, to win it all, you need a quarterback that can win you a Super Bowl. You look at the three quarterbacks that have won so far. You had Tom Brady with, for the Big Ten. You had Lamar Jackson for the ACC. Uh, I gotta get that no, the extra sack for the for Emmanuel Agba. But you had Lamar Jackson for the ACC. He sacks. Okay, but Lamar Jackson for the ACC, and then last year, Patrick Mahomes for the Big 12. And there's an argument to be made whether Dak Prescott is really in those in a conversation amongst those three. But I can assure you Jimmy Garoppolo's not. He is not even close to that level. Um, Aaron Rodgers is, and we'll see. Aaron Rodgers might win his team in the conference champions this year, too, but it's just that Jimmy G is not quarterback of that caliber. And we have yet to see a mediocre quarterback win a conference of champions. Now, it can happen. We've only done it three times. So, I mean, there is a good chance that eventually we do have someone who's just a mediocre quarterback who comes in, who just throws the ball around enough to his playmakers to win, which if he does that... There's a chance. I mean, the FCS Division II, Division Three has some pretty great receivers, and Adam Thielen, Tyree Kill, and uh, Cooper Cup. I mean, that's going to be an elite receiving core right there, and you're going to have a great chance to get the ball to those guys and let them make plays in free in space. But the fact is, you are going to need to make plays for Jimmy G if you want to win a conference of champions. You can't just rely on your playmakers and defense. You can't do that. It's not how it's not how this works. Let's see if we can get Chris Carson in that hundred yard guys. Um, I'm really worried about an injury. I'm gonna be honest. That is my biggest worry for the Big Twelve through these final four minutes. Because right now we've yet to have an injury that has lasted. We we had two injuries in the Mountain West AAC game. Um, and both those injuries ended up clearing up. Shaquille Griffin for the A's, he got better. And actually, no, the Mountain West injury didn't clear up. Logan Wilson was out for the entirety of the game. Mountain West was eliminated, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, we had an injury, two injuries here today. Pete Williams got hurt. He's, uh, the Big 12, and, um, uh, Joel Ing. He got hurt for Conference USA. Both those injuries ended up resolving themselves, and they both ended up going back into the game, so we don't have to worry about rolling the die to determine how many weeks um, each of these players are going to be out. But I'm worried about an injury or something that will cause, um, cause someone good to end up having to sit out games, and we ended up having it last year. Um, when Aaron Rodgers went down, and that sucked. And I really, I like seeing teams at their full health. The part is, like I said, I'm not turning off injuries, because the fact is injuries do matter in this game, otherwise backups don't matter. For instance, uh, when the Big 12 made the Super Bowl the first year round, Patrick Mahomes was a starting quarterback, and he got hurt for a game. He ended up coming back, but he got hurt for a game. Baker Mayfield had to finish the game. I had to play for a while before he came back in. And the fact is, Baker Mayfield played well, and the fact is, if you turn off injuries, it takes away the actual football part of football. I'm sure, ideally, everyone would love everyone to be injury-free. The fact is, you have to have depth in football, and there's a reason why. It's not a perfect world, and you need depth. 
And the fact is, if we just had no depth, then it would be a boring game. I think you need to have risk of injury. Shotgun here for Patrick Mahomes. Is he going to throw it? He's actually going to throw it. Wow. I would not risk my quarterback getting a taking hit. Oh, he got intercepted. First interception of the game. He's going to get it all the way to the 14-yard line. Um, let's see if they can actually punch it in. Make this less embarrassing loss. Only lose by 30 instead of 37. Uh, yeah, let's go, guys. We did such a great job. We've gotten a total of, like, 200 total yards. Great job. We killed it. But, yeah. I mean, you need to get the touchdown. Um, not to win the game, because that's already out of reach. But to give yourself something. To make yourself feel a little for better for a little bit. Shotgun here for Taylor Heineke. He takes a snap. Fires it underneath to Higby. Higby's going to run for about a four-yard gain. They mark it a four-yard gain. Bring up a second and six. I don't know why the defense is getting yelled at. Because honestly, that, that, that was good. You picked off Patrick Mahomes. That was a good possession. Guys, you did a good job. I know you're not used to it, but I was actually a good possession for you defensively. Oh, the game's over, but, you know. Three tight ends set here under center sale. Heineke turns in the backfield. He's going to go pass, actually, though. He fires it underneath. He's going to be caught, maybe for a first down. Nope, they're going to call it third and inches. Two-minute warning. And honestly, for a snow game, this did not live up to the hype that I was hoping for. I love snow games. Um, especially in Madden. I love that the weather can be random. But uh, shotgun here for Taylor Heineke. Takes the snap. They bring a blitz. He fires it underneath. And that's going to be a touchdown. Yeah! First touchdown of the ball game for Joe New Smith. I think that's his first catch of the ball game, <laughs> to be honest. But Joe New Smith gets the touchdown, and he makes it only a 30 point game with two minutes left. That means all you have to do is score a touchdown. Get an onside. I'm sorry, sorry, get an onside. Score a touchdown. Get an onside. Score another touchdown. Get an onside. Score another touchdown. Um, eight times four is 32. So what we got to do is get four onsides, score two, four touchdowns, and four two-point conversions. Seems pretty simple to make. Oh, that's all you got to do. In a minute and 58 seconds. I wonder if they actually try the onside. If they just, like, kick it off. They're like, oh, my God, I'm, we're done. We're just, just no, no way we're going to win. I should, might as well just give up. Don't even call the timeouts. They're just like, oh, yeah, let's just, just let this game be over. We're done. We're good. We don't want to play anymore. I want to go home. <laughs> I kind of want to see them at least try, though. Like, go for an onside. Do something, you know? They've been punting on fourth down all this time, though, so I don't know if they're actually going to go for an onside. They actually couldn't kick it off, wow. Man, they really did give up. They're just like, dang, we're not going to win this thing. Might as well just give up. <laughs> I wouldn't even be surprised if they didn't call their timeout. Just let the, the guys chew the clock all the way down. To zero so they can go home. They're not embarrassed as badly, though. They got another touchdown. It just wasn't garbage time, and it didn't really matter at all. So, yeah. I bet they can get Chris Carson to a good amount of yards if they just try hard enough. Chris Carson, you can do it. Carson the Arson runs, and he's going to pick up about six yards. I don't think he needs 100, which is sad, because I wanted Chris Carson to get 200, to get both of them over 100. Like, Chris Carson just takes over in the fourth quarter, and when there's garbage time, and he somehow still gets over 100 yards, which is crazy. It would be crazy. Yeah, te Texans aren't even calling a timeout. They're just like, we're so done with this. We want to go home. I'll hand off to Chris Carson. He's going to fight his way for about a three-yard gain. 
Third and one. They could just take a knee if I'm gonna if they're gonna be honest. They could. I think it's down to like thirty some seconds. Just take a knee. End the game. Unless they call a timeout, which they won't. I'm gonna hand off. I guess Carson's gonna pick it up. I'm a little bit more. It's at 78 yards in the game total, and it is almost over, ladies and gentlemen. Probably no one watched this far, because who the heck would? Um, but I had to stay up and watch it. It's just sucky, but in case there's a few people out there who wanted to watch their Big 12 team do well, yeah, your team did extremely well, like, so well, guys. Like, it was really good. But, unfortunately, Rory, I had to watch... The Conference USA would be really bad. Um, they don't really have to take a knee to end the game. The game ends. Well, you know, I'm going to take a knee. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. Not if you're a Conference USA fan. You definitely did not enjoy that. But hey, everybody. This is GG Week saying Mario Sanders. And good luck to the Mac and, and uh, Independence and heading forward the Big 12.